Okay. <clears throat> so we still have a few things, not many. Okay, we'll take a few minutes to complement what was uh, discussed yesterday. But I thought, you know, just that we can have a discussion on um, exercise set five, problem one. That will be the last exercise set. And you say, thank God. Okay. <laughs> but, um, and I think we will have the deadline before Easter. So you are able to, you know, to, if you have any plans, you are able to take that out of your mind. Okay. So let's say we are, when is Easter? I think it's uh, someplace here. Yeah. Is it? Okay. So we have one, two. So it should be delivery will be. Okay, maybe before that. Okay, we still have probably we'll have three problems. Um, but I just want you to, because we already cover hydrates uh, last yesterday, so I think you already have enough background to start working on it. Uh, the only thing is that you, we are not going to make that calculation in Excel. We are going to use a software uh, called Hisis. Uh, and that's what I want to give you very... How many of you know how to use HISIS? Okay, you're not expert, you, you know, at least you're familiar with the interface and everything, okay? So some of you already have a back background on that. But the problem is, is the following. So we are going back to our field, okay, which we have been using a lot in this course. Okay, you're getting very uh, sympathetic with Snow White. Um, and we know that there the field has a very long transportation pipe. We know that mainly here the cooling won't be so much during normal operation, okay, only when we have shutdown. We will have probably to inject uh, some inhibitor, okay, to avoid, for example, formation of hydrate. This is a, a gas field uh, that we have a problem with hydrate due to the reduction of pressure and temperature. And also we have small hydrocarbon molecules, okay? We have methane, propane, butane, but we also have water, okay? Remember that the gas is typically saturated with formation water, and when it starts to flow and go back, the, the water starts to drop out of the gas, okay? And this becomes free water, and that's causing hydrate, okay? It's not because you have coning from an aquifer, you don't have that in gas wells. If you have coning in a gas well from an aquifer, then is the well is going to die very quickly. Okay, because you have a stream from the aquifer that flows into the well and then simply it creates too much back pressure for it to flow. It creates like a blockage on the well. Okay, so the water that we have here the, that can cause hydrate is basically dropping from the gas due to condensation. Okay? And it's water that is saturated in the reservoir um, from the beginning. Okay, so we are going to look at the main pipe where the main cooling happens to see if we have hydrate problems here. Okay. And so then you're, um, the way to do that, I, I told you, if, um, if we are going to make a plot, right, we usually the hydrate line, okay, we, we make a plot something like that pressure and temperature and first we have a few things we have the dew point the the phase envelope of the substance that will look something like that okay maybe we have some liquid part the critical point and we have some liquid part like that so that's the phase envelope that's simply dividing what is single phase gas and what is a mixture <clears throat> so that's a bit of thermodynamics um, refreshment. But remember, we also have these lines that were lines of constant quality. Okay, and basically they tell you how much liquid you have compared with the total amount. Okay, so here basically that's quality zero. Quality, we use the letter X mass of liquid divided by the total mass and here it will be zero quality okay. 
and when you start entering crossing that line you will see you will find one percent two percent three percent as you go inside okay but that's just you know it from from thermodynamics okay now we have also this line that we discussed yesterday which is the hydrate formation line that we know if we cross that we're in trouble okay we are in the safe area to the right we cross it to the left then we are in trouble and finally we have what we are going to look at if we simplify fire our pipe okay we say it's a horizontal pipe which is not okay but it's simply to make it simple to sketch we know that we have basically Okay, we have pressure and we have a distance x and also we have let's make it on a secondary axis temperature and both pressure and temperature will be declining with the distance okay until you reach here separator pressure and in temperature let's make it with red it's also going to decrease And what we will expect is it will reach maybe some, if it loses all heat, it will reach a, simply a stabilized number, or it will simply decline all the way until you reach here. That, that, pre that temperature, we said it's at the wellhead, okay? We are saying the temperature um, basically here, we're saying is 70. If you remember from the previous exercise, we had that pressure which was 70, a temperature that was 70. So what I suggest, just to see when it's crossing, that we simply take these two initial points and we pay, plot them someplace here. So it will be T at the inlet of the flow line and pressure at the inlet of the flow line. Okay? That you will be probably in the gas region. Okay? And then when you start to flow, both start to reduce, and they reduce, and they reduce. And if you have a hydrate problem, so let's make maybe this one in blue. Simply, it will cross the line, and that's where you will have your P separator and your T separator. Okay. Another point where you cross that line it means that you will be that you will be in trouble all the rest of the pipe that i have from here to here let's say that the crossing happens here okay cross the hydrate line then you will be in trouble all of that part of the pipe all the rest of the pipe will be in hydrate danger region okay so be aware, we are looking at pressure and temperature along the pipe, but we are simply converting that into everything in pressure and temperature. Okay, because we have an area that we have to cross that has both pressure and temperature. It's not affected only by one, like in wax, okay? Wax, the line is relatively vertical because there you have one main, see, see it's not too much affected by, by pressure, okay? Okay, so our main task is basically to compute. We have some rate, we have some pipe, we have some insulation, and we want to compute how pressure and temperature drop along this pipe. Okay, that's the main, the main purpose. And see when it's crossing, and if it's crossing, what can we do? Okay, so that's why we say steady state. We are not looking at slugging. Okay, 1D, we don't like to see what happens, you know, 3D or in the radial direction, we just want to see along the pipe. And for that, we have a simulator that is typically used for process called HISIS. Okay, HISIS is a process, a simulator. It's a, what we call a process simulator. And it's typically used for, for topside facilities 
okay? To make separation train, to make dehydration, to make distillation, to make all of those things. So it's not the best simulator to do to solve this problem. But the thing is that we have a lot of license here at, at NTNU, and also it handles very well the 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 PVT, the thermodynamic behavior. It handles it very very well because it uses equation of state. It has a lot of equations available, so that handles very very well. So they can calculate things that we need to make that calculation, like enthalpy, amount of liquid, condensation, things that we are very concerned. Okay, it's not very good. It's not not very good. And don't tell Aspen Tech I said this, but not very good for DP DX in pipe with multiphase flow. Because that's what we are going to have, right? We are going to have a flow of a liquid that will be water and condensate coming out of the gas and flow of gas. So that means multiphase, we say here, is basically gas condensate and water but we are going to say we accept we accept that also if you compare with the equation we use or you have used in the previous exercise or the exercise number two you were using dry gas equation so you were neglecting any liquid okay you're you were also considering horizontal pipe so expect that the results with HISIS will be different from the results you find in Excel. Okay? That's kind of, you know, makes sense. Okay, so let's see here. We're going to use HISIS to model only the pipe. Okay? And you have to perform your calculations. Usually we try to do it during the life of the field, for every year, for example, or every three years. In your case, you're going to make only two years. Okay? Initial production, where you have a gas rate of 20 million, the choke delta P, remember the, del the choke is causing a temperature drop. That's also affecting, you know, the cooling in the pipe. Reservoir pressure, and you do it at time 26 years, 16, no choke, you're in decline, and then 97. And there is a discussion, you are part of an engineering team, and they are arguing if you have to use insulated pipe or naked pipe. Okay? And they are, the new engineer says you should use insulation, and the rest of the team, we don't normally use insulation. Okay? So see if that makes any, any sense. Okay? And it tells you some orientation for the exercise, tabulate and plot pressure, temperature, liquid holdup, okay, along the pipe. And the liquid holdup is basically okay. Is simply how much of the pipe area is occupied by liquid. If you see the cross section of the pipe, you see that you have part of the area is the liquid, which that means the condensate and also water. And part of it is occupied by the gas. Okay. And that tells you something about first the friction that you have against the wall. Some parts you have gas is causing most of the friction, and sometimes you have the liquid. Okay, so that's affecting the pressure drop, but also it's affecting the average density of the mixture. Mm -hmm. So the hold up. HL will be AL divided by AG plus AL. How much of the pipe is occupied by liquid? And that's typically a number between 0 and 1. Okay, 90%, everything is, almost everything is liquid. 0.1%, almost everything is gas. Okay. And then uh, plot the phase envelope. We are going to see now where do we find all of these things in HISIS. Plot pressure and temperature on the PT diagram. Okay, and then see if you have hydrate formation. Okay, and then you have some suggestions how to 
The pipeline profile is given here in this chart. I took it from a presentation from Equinor. It's this black thing here. So you have to digitize it, the elevation and the length, and you have to extract the points. I say use uh, 10, 10 points. Okay. Other things you need, the pressure at the slot catcher, 30, temperature of the seabed is 6, the component, the composition. There is one component which is not a pure component. Okay, it's not simply a tabulated component. It's decades plus, which is including everything ha heavier than decade. Okay, so I group that into one group. So I will show you now how to include that component. Okay? And you have to, like I mentioned before, uh, you have a, the way we handle the cooling is with a heat transfer coefficient. Probably you remember from your thermodynamic course. Okay? And there are two options. So we have convection from the fluid to the pipe wall. Okay, there are two configurations. Okay, remember heat transfer, we have the fluid, the temperature of the fluid here. So we have one transfer that we make like a resistance with the wall. So that will be temperature at the wall. Then we have conduction. Then we have temperature at the outer wall. Okay, we have another resistance here, T wall outer. And then finally we have free convection with the environment, with the T of the C. So in that case, we have only three layers. Okay. So that's naked pipe configuration. Okay, and then you have insulated pipe, okay, in which you have an insulation layer. So you have the pipe, then you have the metal pipe. Then you have your insulation, and we are neglecting, you know, the protection. Typically, those layers, insulation, they have like a small plastic layer to protect it. We are neglecting conduction on that layer. Okay, and finally, you have the C someplace here. Okay, so you, instead of having three layers, you have four. You have internal convection, then you have conduction in the pipe, then you have conduction in the insulation, and then you have free convection with the C. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, th I think, you know, then you can go through the information, that's a hydrate line, and this is considering different amounts of inhibitor. I told you that it shrinks the line, okay, it moves the line to the left. So if you have 15% weight of methanol, it will be now this line. 35% will be this line. 50% will move it further to the left. Okay, But I think we can start with, uh, you can then look at the rest of the details of the exercise. But let's look first like at, at HISIS. Okay? And it's, it's very relatively easy to use. So I go to farm. Uh, I think there is a way to get it on your computer. Um, or you can also use, I think it's also installed on some of these computers, on this lab here, and on the third floor. Okay, so I, but I'm going to use farm. I know some of you are not very happy with farm, mm -hmm. but uh, okay. scientific, and then I find the program that is called HISIS. Yeah, and I click there, I hope it works, I'm connected. <coughs> hmm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I tell you, we're using any, any software, remember to save. 
okay there are some programs don't save automatically you have been working for three hours and then something happens and you're you're crying okay it happened to all of us so just remember that so it's a new a new simulation takes some time it has a lot of other things we're going to use just very simple functionality so first we have to define what components are we considering is using equation of state to calculate all properties so we have to give if it have methane propane what kind of things the component has okay the the fluid has and i think i give it here you know but it will take me a long time to copy all of these so i will use only two components okay but you so you have the work to do the rest so i'm going to choose 80 percent methane and i'm going to choose just to show you how to put decanes plus which is not a tabulated component, but it's a pseudo component grouping everything. So we don't have to make simulation with all the way to C50 or C60. We only do down to C10. Okay? So we first add methane. Okay, you find it here. And you find also all the others. But now we want to add, it's not a pure component. It's not something that is standard is something that I have for my particular field a component that groups all the others okay and that I call a hypothetical component okay I don't want to create a batch I just want to create one okay and then I create new hypothetical component they call it instead of pseudo component then I Okay, click the name will be decanes plus and it needs some minimal information to characterize those components. Okay? If you want to make it very thorough and if you want to understand exactly you go to the course of Curtis Whitson. Okay? He tell you exactly what kind of things you have to change. But in our case we're going to use simply Okay, the things provided here. We have two properties, the molecular weight, 172, okay, and the density, that it's uh, 814. Okay, and then I estimate, those two should be enough to estimate all the rest. Using correlation, HISIS has some correlations that they, using these two numbers, they can find everything else. Okay? And maybe it doesn't match exactly the things that you have in the field. So for that, you know, you have to take the course of, of, um, of, of Curtis. Okay? So then I move it to the, to the package. I want to include it in the simulation. Okay, decades plus. And after that, I'm finished with the components. Okay? In your case, you have to go through the whole list. After that, I go to fluid package and say how I'm going to model this component, what I'm going to use to model PVT, the pressure, volume, temperature, behavior. Okay, so I click add, first is empty. And here I have many, many options. Okay, some of them that are correlations, some of them that are equation of state, some of them that are a different type of correlation of state. We're going to use, in petroleum engineering, we typically use Ben Robinson, PR, or we use SRK, Suave Redlich Quam. Okay. So we're going to use, let's use Ben Robinson. And here he's saying how he's calculating everything. Okay. Viscosity has a correlation inside the program. So you can here tune it. If you have a bit more, if you know a bit more about that, you can change to represent better your fluid. Okay. And after that, very simple. I'm done. I have put the basis, the fluids that I'm going to use and how I'm going to calculate those fluids, the properties. Okay. Then I enter simulation. Okay, and remember to save. Okay, and then I'm going to put the way HISIS works, I define a location first. This is like a stream, and that stream has, is like the inlet of the pipe, in our case our system, 
it will have okay two locations okay we have one location at the inlet of the pipe one location at the outlet of the pipe which is the separator and then we have to put something in between and the way HISIS works is that that is like a process okay? if you have a valve that's also a process if you have a separator that's also a process so you have two things stream and process okay so let's create the first stream okay and if we double click we can populate the information okay temperature that's the inlet right so let's change first the name let's call it plem okay temperature 70 pressure we are not exactly sure right because the pressure I put a pressure and then it calculates downstream and then it finds that pressure. We know the slug catcher should be 30, but we don't know what that pressure should be. So I say initially, let's put a number relatively high. So let's use 120 bar. And then we just check if the pressure downstream is, um, is, is 30. And then I also need the molar flow or the mass flow. So how do I calculate those? From the gas flow. Okay, I have 20 and I need also to calculate the mass flow is the density at standard conditions. So how much is, what is the density we have? Okay, just to have an estimate, I, I let's see, 0.89, okay, and we have, that's the density at standard conditions. So let's use that number. Uh, here is total mass flow 228, okay, considering gas, oil, and, wa and water. So let's use that number uh, as a starting point, okay, 228. And that was a kilogram per second, right? And now I have these three, and it's telling me I still need to know how is this gas, uh, what is forming this gas, okay? So I go here to the composition tab, and I say methane is 80%, and decanes plus, that will be 0.2, the rest. Okay, in reality, you will have a lot of components. And now it says everything is fine. I can calculate everything. Okay? So here you have something interesting in these attachments. Go to analysis. And then go to create. And you see you have a bunch of other things we're not going to use. But here you have envelope. And that's to compute the envelope of the substance. Okay? We go here to performance, plots, okay, and that's how the envelope looks like. That's the liquid region, and that's the gas region. Okay, and we have a pressure of 120. Where is 120 bar? Uh, one bar is uh, five kilopascals. So we have is again our temperature is seventy. Okay. Also here you can also tell HISIS to compute the hydrate line. Okay? But we are not going to use that line. We are going to use the one that, that I gave you. Okay, but here is where you can find the envelope and if you want to get the points you can take them from here. Here you have the bubble point line and the dew point line 
and also the quality for different qualities that you want. The qualities are specified, I think, here. So you can say, I want for 0 0.01%, okay, and it's very close, and you can say 0 0.1. Okay. okay, so now after I have that, I need to have the separator point and I have to join them, okay? So I put another line. This one, I just have to change the name. They will be connected. So they will have the same composition and the all the properties will be a, a result of the pipe calculation. So let me just change the name here. It will be um, separator or a slug catcher. And then I'm going to put the pipe in between, okay? And the pipe, I find it here. There are a lot of different processes like separator, heater, heat exchanger. So I'm going to use a pipe segment. Okay, and it tells me here error. It requires a feed stream, that's the inlet. It requires a product stream, that's the outlet, which I have but also requires an energy stream. And that makes sense. The pipe is losing heat, okay, to the environment. So that energy, you see here we have one blue and one red. Okay, so I'm going to put the red. And then I first, I'm going to connect, you know, I'm going to say first, okay, I'm going to connect those on the pipe. Inlet, plem, outlet, slug catcher, and energy cube. Okay, but I have to start to specify all the things inside, all the dimensions, everything I need. Okay, uh, so I think for that I go to rating, sizing, okay, and then I have to say add segments to my pipe. Initially, now there is nothing. Okay, so I add a segment. In your case, I told you to, you know, you have to represent this geometry so you will need a few segments of pipe okay i told you at least use 10 points such that we capture slightly the shape but you can use more if you want uh what type of thing is is a pipe i have other things i have a t elbow i don't i neglect those equivalent length what is the length of this pipe 180 kilometers Elevation change, there is some change, okay, it's um, 450, okay, outer diameter as provided here, depends on what pipe you're using, uh, out, outer pipe is 777, if we are using isolated pipe, inner diameter 678. Steel, I have roughness, the conductivity of the pipe, how many increments. If I have this 150 kilometers pipe, how many subdivisions I'm going to use? So five is too few, okay? I'm going to have a very bad. Um, <coughs> Uh, estimation. So I told you here it's recommended to use one kilometer. Okay, so you have to divide. If it's one kilometer, it will be a bunch of subdivisions. Okay. And then I come, so I have given everything for the pressure drop the size of the pipe, the length of the pipe, the change of the inclination, but now I need the heat transfer. How much heat is losing? Okay, for that I go below. And it has a few different options, okay? That I provide how much heat, I measure somehow how much heat is losing. I don't want that option. I want this overall heat transfer coefficient based on all the layers that I have. Ambient temperature was um, six, six degrees, I think. Yeah, 
TC bit. And the overall heat transfer coefficient based on the outer diameter. That's something you'll have to go back to your books, okay, to see how that's calculated. But you have, can have a refreshment on my compendium, Appendix C. It tells you exactly how do you compute the, the U, okay, which is the heat transfer coefficient based on the inner area and heat transfer coefficient based on the outer area. Okay, so simply you use that equation if you don't remember. Okay, but you have, here you have conduction, no, so that's, um, that's inner, um, no, so that's inner convection until the pipe, the metal pipe wall. Then I have conduction in the inner metal pipe wall. I have conduction in the insulation layer. And then I have free convection outside. Okay, so these are the three terms I have. So not to spoil anything, I'm just going to put a number here, five. That you will see if that number is accurate or not. And I think we are done. Okay, I have specified heat transfer. Okay, increment delta P greater than 10. So it's, it's giving me an error. Okay, but it calculated, so it's giving me an error saying you have too few segments. Okay, but basically it calculated, if you go now to that stream, it calculated now the temperature will be 5. Pressure is uh, 60, 70 bar, okay? And yeah, the mass flow should be the same. We have mass conservation, okay? If you want to know the conditions along the pipe, you go back to the pipe and then you go to, I think it's performance, view profile, and here you can get the data, okay, mm -hmm. of the length, the pressure, and temperature, okay, and the plot of pressure going down, quite linear, temperature going down, not so linear, okay, and that's where you collect the data for your, for your case. Okay, um, So I think that's all we have time, I have time to say today, okay? So I will say, suggest you start working on, on that, on the time now that we have left, those of you who can stay, if you can start working on assembling the model, okay, of this, of this case. And then we take some more discussion next week on, on the other, on the other things. Okay, but very simple to use. Um, uh, very straightforward, it's very intuitive to find things. I think you, for the case, there is one case, one year that you have a choke, okay? And there you have that the wellhead temperature is 70, but you should model also the pressure drop across the choke, just to see how the pressure, how the temperature drops. Okay, and you have a choke here. Um, so I have to add one more. I think I will spoil the whole thing. A choke, control valve. Okay, doesn't want to go up. Yeah, I don't think maybe it's this one. Okay, so I put here, first I have to connect that one will be the given, the input. So the valve I connect plem, the inlet will be plem, that I have to change the name. First I have to disconnect it from here. Okay, and then I connect from the valve, the plem and one. And then I should give the pressure drop that was, how much was it? 162. 
bar okay a negative pressure the pressure is not enough to go through the system okay so we have to increase that number but now I also have to change the names okay that will be wellhead Okay, I go here one that will be plem. Okay. And now I to make it flow, simply I reach a negative pressure here because with that pressure drop I had 120 minus 162 that gives you negative pressure. Okay, so I have to increase it. Uh, and I can try just with 200 for example more. Okay, still not enough. So I just continue increasing to 50. Okay, now I calculate the pressure is uh, 15 bar. Okay. So you could do manually. For now I tell you, just to start with, not to confuse you too much with too many things. I just say just change it manually so you know it's 15 I should increase it slightly okay for example 260 bar until you have exactly until you have exactly 30 here you have 35 okay so you have to go down a bit but next class I will show you how you can use some solver automatically that it changes that pressure to find out here exactly 30 and that is called an adjust and it's uh, here okay this key basically you add like a solver like in excel to change the pressure at the wellhead until the pressure at the slot catcher is exactly 30 okay yes so uh sorry for the short lecture but uh so you can start working on uh on that problem and there will be also a, a lot of other things that maybe you don't understand right away. So for that we take a session next week, okay, to clarify those. But I think just get familiar with the software, assemble your basic uh, layout, and try simply to get to start getting solutions. Okay. Okay. Thank you, and see you next week.